Hello gardening friends. In today's video I would like to share with you my journey growing the sunshine chili peppers from seed to harvest. I would like to thank Rob Bob from Australia for sharing these seeds with me. Rob's channel on YouTube is one of those channels that I watched extensively when I began my gardening journey five years ago. His worm bin and composting videos are one of my favorites. Starting, I am using my tea leaf compost, vermiculite and coconut coir in equal parts. My tea leaf compost does not contain any seeds from my kitchen waste. So I know that the seeds that are germinating are the seeds that I have sowed. An important point to remember is that although the chili plant will grow through the year in Mumbai weather, it may not fruit through the year because when it is really hot in May and in October although the plant may flower many of the blooms may fall off because of the excessive heat so the best time to start a plant from seed would be end of August after the rains and then the plant has a good six to eight months till February and March to grow and produce well after I have sowed the seeds, I use a spray bottle to keep the potting mix moist. However, once the seedlings emerge, I only bottom water. And this helps to promote a good root system and to avoid rotting of the tender stem of the seedlings at the soil level. For this season, I used a seed starting tray instead of individual cups so that I could move the entire tray easily away from the rain or towards the sun. I planted one seed per cell. I planted three seeds per variety aiming for one final plant. If you are a beginner it is better to sow five seeds to get one plant. If you do end up with extra you can always share the sapling with a friend. Unlike tomato seedlings, chili seedlings and plants take their time to grow and get established. So it requires some patience. However, once they are fully grown, they can be productive for two to three years, depending on how well we take care of the plant and of course the weather conditions. Watering just a little bit helps to get the seedling out easily. I like to transplant my chili seedling at the same soil level as it was previously. I do not bury the stem of my chili seedlings. I transplanted two saplings into the final grow bag and after a few weeks I cut off one at the soil line, leaving just one plant to grow in the 15 by 15 inch grow bag. For any plant that is going to give fruit, the bigger the grow bag or container, the easier it is to maintain. Here is another grow bag in which I have my poblano pepper growing. You can see that there is space here in the grow bag so that I can add my amendments. 
in the tray here I have the neem pellets, the fish bone meal and wood ash. So I need to fertilize this plant. So what I'm going to do is just put the amendments not too close to the stem, just around. Mix it in. Water it. And then cover this up with dried leaves. It will require less watering and less feeding as compared to very small pots. This 15 by 15 inch grow bag works perfectly for one chili plant. I use a potting mix that is equal parts compost wormy compost or worm castings coconut coir and vermiculite I use a potting mix and not native soil as I need to keep the mix very light on my grills if I had two grow bags one with native soil and the other one with my potting mix the native soil bag is three times heavier than my potting mix bag the grow bag you can see that I've mulched it with whatever there are some tomato branches in here there are dried leaves and what I want to show you all of my grow bags have red wigglers so what I do is I put a banana peel or some other type of scrap that they enjoy so that I have automatic castings here you can see them so that I have I'm just running away automatic worm castings in all of my grow bags so I may put a banana peel or I may put a musk melon peel so then I don't need to add worm castings throughout the season and keeping the bag mulched helps in two ways one is it prevents the evaporation of water from the top and also as the leaves break down slowly it kind of is a food source again for the red wigglers biggest issue I face every year with my chili plants is the curly leaf virus. Every plant started from seed falls prey to this menace. I sow around 50 seeds every year. The young seedlings are affected by the time they are around 6 to 8 weeks old after which it is a losing battle and I may be left with just one healthy plant at the end of it. 3rd of December 2016 and it was growing well till the growing end got the curly leaf virus and I pruned it and after the pruning it started to send out new growth from all the nodes but if you see carefully each node also has the curly leaf virus I see the beginnings of the curly leaf virus on this plant as well so I'll have to see how this progresses. I 
had white flies on my green chili plant two years ago and I tried to spray it with the garlic uh, spray the infestation was so severe I could not get rid of it so what I did instead was I cut back the plant completely instead of trying to battle the infestation and this plant has been producing for me beautifully since the last eight months all chili plants or pepper plants love the sun and do best with at least six to eight hours of sun per day however as you can see I have had great success with both chilies and tomatoes with just three to five hours of sun this chili plant is getting around four hours of sun currently once a plant has got established in the main growing season I am able to maintain it and get occasional harvests from it even with just two hours of sun as you saw in my Thai Prickhi new video of last year Feeding your plant in a pot or grow bag regularly is the key to having a healthy plant with good harvests. In the next few slides I will share with you what and how I feed my plants. I will put the same details in the description box as well if you wish to note them down. Watering depends on the size of the container or grow bag, size of the plant, sun exposure and even the medium you are using to grow in. A potting mix like mine needs watering every two days with my sun exposure of four hours. However, now that the plant is producing heavily, it needs two liters of water daily. I like to use a 1 litre bottle initially so that I know how much I am watering and how much I need to increase later. Later on when the plant has become big I use a 5 litre watering can and water half and half between two similar grow bags so that's around two and a half litres in each grow bag. Here you can see my two year old chili plant wilted in the afternoon sun. If it does not recover from the wilting in the evening, I know I need to increase the frequency and the quantity of water for this plant. Sometimes I do not wait for the evening, I just water it immediately since it is flowering and fruiting. The flowers are beautiful with yellow markings like the rays of the sun. 
so as you can see the sunshine chili plant is absolutely loaded so many of them hiding inside and i'm going to be harvesting these chilies today so that the plant can produce more after the chilies have formed it does take a good 2 weeks for them to turn to this beautiful color and they are aptly called sunshine chilies and the plant has done really well for me so thank you so much rob for sharing the seeds with me absolutely gorgeous color and the first time i tried the chili i thought it was mild <clears throat> i used it in an omelet and i thought it was fruity and mild and then i decided that i should have a taste of the chili as it is and i took a bite and oh my god it was it was hot so i changed my <laughs> opinion on that at first i called it not spicy at all but definitely medium spicy i don't know the scoville rating of this one was the first big harvest from this plant weighing in at 156 grams on the 24th of february 2017 exactly 6 months after sowing the seeds with full sun the plant would have probably fruited 2 months earlier nevertheless i'm pleased as hell with the end result Saving seeds of peppers is pretty easy. Just cut up and open the pepper like this, and scrape out all the seeds. And what I like to do is, this is a disposable dinner napkin. It's quite thick, much thicker than a regular tissue paper. So I like to collect all the seeds. and leave them out to dry in a cool place out of sun and once the seeds have completely dried up what i do is i take this butter paper and fold the seeds into it label it and put it in the fridge is pretty simple these are seeds that i saved in january last month so i have put a label written on paper inside keeping the paper inside helps if there's a chance of even slightest of moisture the paper is going to absorb it also i've realized that this writing on the zip pouches with a marker pen after a while the writing is gone so it's better to keep a paper inside so these are the seeds that i have saved in january and then i have a whole lot of seeds to save <laughs> from this batch so here again i've kept the seeds in a tissue earlier i used to put them directly into the zip pouch but now i've decided to either put them in a tissue 
or in butter paper and then these are stored in the refrigerator I hope you found this video interesting and informative thank you so much for watching and happy gardening